It was perfect timing. Perfect timing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have to do video. I have to do video now. Come here. Come here up. Yeah, there you go. Okay, lay down. Okay. I squish over. Let me just do this. Come here. Tenzi. Tenzi, baby. Okay. Or don't. That's okay, too. Hello, and welcome to my lecture on chemical and physical changes. This is lecture number five. I told you in the previous video that I'd be covering elements, compounds, and mixtures, but I think I'm going to do that for lecture number six. I'm sure you're really disappointed, but it'll be okay. So to start out, I want to talk to you guys about physical change. Okay, we looked a little bit at physical properties in the previous video, um, but when something changes physically, it's changing form, but it does not change its formula. So the video below is showing you ice melting, which ice is just water in its solid form. Okay, when water is in its liquid form, it still is H2O. So we can think of matter as having several different physical states. Um, there's the three that you know, solid, liquid, gas, and we also in chemistry want to think about aqueous solutions, which are really something dissolved into something else. We can look at a variety of physical changes, such as how water goes from gas, liquid, to solid. Going from gas to liquid is condensation. Going from liquid to gas is evaporation. If we look at carbon dioxide, solid, which is we call dry ice, going to a gas, that going directly to a gas and not passing through the liquid phase is called sublimation. Hopefully I can find a video to show you guys that. As it just so happens, I have a cool video of the sublimation of iodine, where in one way you can take iodine as a solid and heat it, and it will go straight to a gas. But in this one, you add a little bit of zinc and a little bit of water, and iodine sublimates from solid to gas. Okay, you guys have seen a little bit of this in the first lab we did, the chemical and physical properties lab. But chemical change is where a substance changes from chemical A to chemical B. Okay, write this down. I gave you guys a picture of rusty nails because rusty nails are undergoing a change where the nail, the metal in the nail is reacting with oxygen to create a new product, rust, and the nails won't ever go back to what they used to be. Okay. Pause here. I need a symbol for pause. I think um, this is stop in sign language, but pause the video just for a few minutes to write these down. Hopefully you paused at me thinking. Anyway, the indicators, there are four indicators of chemical change. There's gas being released or given off. There's light and heat. There's a color change and a precipitate is formed. Okay, I'll give you guys a few examples. Make sure you write down um, a little bit of description of each of these so you kind of remember what each of these things look like. This reaction here is very similar to the reaction you guys did with sodium bicarbonate and hydrochloric acid. The little crumbly bits, that was calcium carbonate that was put into hydrochloric acid. Okay, You can see if you look really closely there, it's bubbling. Okay, When something's bubbling, that's not the acid eating away at that, it's a gas being released from the reaction. Okay, we'll get way more into that. It's really neat, but those bubbles coming up out of the Erlenmeyer, Meyer, excuse me, coming out of the Erlenmeyer flask are, is the gas being released. Also, if you touch that, you'd see that it was hot. It was also releasing some heat. So I've taken a sound out of this video, but what they're going to demonstrate here is some magnesium ribbon, which you guys worked with in the lab. 
and they've put the magnesium ribbon inside a block of dry ice. So I'm going to take this and heat it, and as you know, you saw this in the lab, magnesium burns really bright, and it actually burns really hot. You guys did not test that, but it burns really hot as well. It produces some heat. So they're going to burn that in dry ice. So let's see what happens. Now, as you know, magnesium reacts with oxygen. So what they've done by covering this in dry ice, which is carbon dioxide, is they're creating an environment where it has to react with carbon dioxide, which it can. All that steam rushing out is a gas. Okay, there's some definitely some heat being produced, even though it's surrounded by a block of ice. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the white magnesium oxide, which you guys produce, which is magnesium reacting with oxygen. But the black stuff, and they'll uh, uncover it a little bit, but the black stuff that you're seeing is actually elemental carbon because that reaction happened in an environment with no oxygen. It was happening in an environment with carbon dioxide. It reacted and produced, produced magnesium oxide and elemental carbon, which is the black stuff. He'll crunch that open a little bit. There's actually quite a bit of elemental carbon in there because there was a lot to react with. And then the white stuff again is magnesium oxide, which is still produced in an environment without oxygen because carbon dioxide has oxygen in it for it to react with. So there also might be a color change. When you crack open an egg, you know that the egg white is actually clear, but then when you cook it, you're actually denaturing proteins and causing a chemical change that you won't actually be able to get that egg white, the clear egg white back. That egg is now cooked and able to be eaten. Another example of a color change is lead nitrate and potassium iodide. Each of these solutions are clear, but when mixed together, they form a precipitate that's yellow. So what's a precipitate? It's a solid that comes out of solution. The example I showed you before with lead nitrate and potassium iodide, I'm showing you again so you can see this reaction happen again. Um, it's also showing conservation of matter here. So what's a precipitate? It's actually a solid that comes out of solution. So when mixing lead nitrate and potassium iodide, yes, there's a color change, but there's also that yellow is a precipitate where it's if you um, evaporated the liquid in this mixture, you'd find that there's a yellow solid that's produced from this, the yellow solid being um, lead iodide. So in other words, when a precipitate is formed, it's when you take a solution and a solution and your result is a solution and a, a solid. Let's look at some examples. So cooking egg, I said, was a chemical change. What about dissolving salt? Probably just a physical change. Because we're just dissolving it in it, we can s separate the water and salt again. It, they can be separate things again, it's okay. What about burning paper? Right, well, burning paper is going to be a chemical change because when you burn something, you're reacting it with oxygen or you're reacting it with some kind of gas to produce a new chemical. That paper is now much different than it was and you can't really return it to what it used to be now that you've gone through this chemical change. Um, on the other hand, crumpling a paper up, taking a piece of paper you got a bad grade on, you crumple it all up and throw it in the recycling. That is just a physical change. Yeah, the paper's probably not going to look exactly the same, but you didn't change anything about it except the shape and the space that it was taking up. 
Uh, what if we melt iron? If I have an iron wrought, wrought iron and I melt it down, um, can I ever bring it back to what it used to be? Yeah, probably. I'm going to call that a physical change. Okay, looking at something you guys did in your lab, what about melting sugar? If you take sugar and you melt it over heat and it turns kind of brown and liquid, can that sugar go back to what it used to be? Maybe not, but just the act of melting it is just making it change states. It was a solid and it becomes a liquid, so it's going to be a physical state. Excuse me, a physical change. Whereas burning sugar, where we take that melted brown sugar, we take crystal sugar, the white crystal sugar, and burn it, turn it black and crunchy and disgusting. We're actually reacting that a little bit more with oxygen and causing oxygen and hydrogen to leave the, uh, the sugar. So we're, we're leaving a lot of elemental carbon in there and that sugar is not really going to go back to the way it used to be. So I'm calling that a chemical change. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for elements, compounds, and mixtures. You are a freak.